My name is Blessing Adisuji, a senior developer advocate at Circle. In this tutorial, we are going through the steps of using the user controlled wallet. You will understand how to create a user, set up PIN codes, security questions, and also use smart contract wallet, and many more stuff that we are going to go over in this tutorial. The first thing I'd like to explain is user controlled wallet. What is user controlled wallet? This is a type of programmable wallet infrastructure model in which the app users are granted full autonomy, enabling them to have complete control over their wallet. We are going to go over a few steps that will enable you to integrate user-controlled wallet into your application as a developer. We will be using the Quickstar platform to do that. The Quickstar platform is really easy to use and you can navigate from one step to the other step using the next and previous buttons. With the introduction out of the way, the first thing I'd like to show you is how to generate your API key, which is step two right here. To generate your API key, I'll navigate to console.circle.com. If you don't have an account already, you can create one on the console, or if you've got an account, you can just simply log in. And to create your API key, all you need to do is navigate to this left side, click on API keys, and see this button right here, which says create a key, click on that, and that will take you to this, and all you need to do right here is put in the key name. So I'll give it test key, and you can see that we've got two key types right here. We have the standard key, and we have the restricted key. The difference between the two of them is that standard key gives you access to pretty much all the APIs that we have with the Web3 services. And then restricted key allows you to grant access to only a few or selected Web3 services product, programmable wallet, smart contract platform, and the web books. For this demonstration, I'm simply going to use the standard key and feel free to use the restricted key if you desire. So with that, I'll click on create key. The next thing you need to do is copy this key and store it somewhere safe. Once this model pops up, Make sure you copy your key and store it somewhere safe because if you don't and you close this model, you won't have access to your key again. So I've copied this API key. I'm going to keep it somewhere safe because we pretty much use this key for all the subsequent steps that we're going to go over. Now that that's done, the next step is to acquire the app ID. I'm sure the question on your mind is, what is an app ID? To understand how to integrate user controlled wallet into your application, I will explain four terms as we continue with this tutorial, so stay tuned. The first one is the app ID, which is what we are going to get in this step. Think of app ID as your application's unique identifier. It serves as a distinct label that sets your application apart from others. There are two methods to get the app ID. The first one is using the API endpoint to get the app ID. And the other one is using the Web3 console, which was where we created the API key. You can use that to also get the app ID. So I'm going to show you how to use both methods now. So in the Web3 console, which is console.teco.com, you can get your app ID by going over to user control and then in the configurator section, and this is your app ID, which you can simply use this button to copy to clipboard and then store it somewhere safe. Now to the second method using the API endpoint. Let me show you how to do that. We've created this quick start platform to enable you to make easy interaction with the API endpoint. And this is the API endpoint that we're going to be interacting with. All you need to do is put in your API key right here in this field and click on the execute button and that will return to you your app ID. This is my API key. I'll click on the execute button and you see I have the response here that says this is my app. ID. All I need to do is copy it and store it somewhere safe because I'll be using the app ID to go through other steps. So with that out of the way, the next step is to create and initialize a user. And this is step four. In this step, we're going to create a user identity and get a session token. Let me explain what this means. Say your user signs up for an account in your application. The steps that you complete as the developer will be to create a user, a session account, and then initialize the user's account where you create a wallet for the user. Let me explain how you would implement this particular process. I will explain three key terms right here. Remember I talked about four terms. We've talked about app ID, and then we have three key terms, the user token, encryption key, and challenge ID. So the first step in this process is to create a new user. We've talked about that. A user is represented by a user ID. This user ID serves as the account identifier, encompassing all the wallets, 
assets and transactions for a particular user. So you can do this by making an API call to the user's endpoint with the user ID as a parameter and note that the user management is entirely in your hands, which means you have to maintain the full control as a developer. The next step is to get a session token. A session token authenticates the user sessions within your application and has a validity period of 60 minutes. How this works is that when the user logs in, you would create a session token and we're going to return an encryption key and a user token. The user token is the session identifier and the encryption key is an encryption and a decryption key that is randomly generated to ensure security of the session. After the session is complete, the next step is to create the user account and create a user wallet for a specified blockchain at the time of the account creation. And that's the step of initializing the user account. Let's go over that particular step where we're going to initialize the user's account. Uh, but before going through the demo, there are two important concepts that I want you to take note of here. The first one is the principle of idempotency. When making an initialization request, it is required that you use an idempotency key which is a unique identifier for the request, which ensures that subsequent requests after the original request with the same key do not create duplicate entities. So the other concept is a challenge to ensure that sensitive operations can only be carried out with the user's explicit authorization. We make use of a challenge. So when the user is taking specific actions like initiating a transaction or executing a smart contract interaction, we make use of a challenge. So feel free to read more about challenges here, as you can see, or visit our developer documentation to learn more about challenges and how to create one. But I'm going to show you a particular demo just now. So the first demo is we want to initialize the user. All you need right here is the user ID. And to generate the user ID, I'm going to use the UUID format. And to get a UUID format, I'm going to use this free UUID generator website. And all I need to do is copy that and I'll go back to this and then put it right here, which is, this is my user ID. I've selected the blockchain to be Matic Mumbai and then I'll execute this. And this would initiate a user account on the Matic Mumbai. And you can see that the account type is a smart contract account, which I'm going to explain in subsequent step. All you need to do right here is copy the response and store it somewhere safe because you are going to be needing the user token, the encryption key, and the challenge ID. So I've explained how all these things work. All you need to do is store them somewhere safe and let's make use of them in the next step. You can also see that the app ID has been pre-populated for us, the user token, the encryption key, and the challenge ID. So you might not necessarily need to store it somewhere safe, but this was why I was asking you to copy it because we need it right here. And I would execute this command and this command will bring up this model that would prompt me, which is a user, or show you how to prompt a challenge for creating a pin. To create a pin, all you need to do is put in numbers that are not consecutive. So I'll put in numbers and I'll hit continue and want and I have my pin all set up. And this is the recovery method step. So this step is similar to what your user would go through when they are creating an account and when you are setting up an account for your user. So I'll click on continue. All I need to do is select, let's select the name of my favorite sport team and then I'll provide an answer. So my favorite sport team is, I'll put an int right here. My second question is what's the name of your favorite pet? Put a random answer, Richard. So I'll keep continue and it continue. So this is the confirmation step and the user would put in agree. And this was made possible by using the web SDK. So we're using the web SDK to simulate what the user would go through to complete the account creation step. And this is how you'd initialize a user account for your user. So with that out of the way, I'll click on next, which is the next step to check the wallet status. So to check the wallet status, all you need to do is provide the API key and the user ID. And we're going to interact with this API endpoint. And you can see the, the parameters that are passed through that and click on the execute button. You can see that the account has been created. It's on the Matic Mumbai blockchain. It's a smart contract account. 
this is the user ID and this is the blockchain address. So you can copy this and keep it somewhere safe because we'll need that in the next step to initiate a transaction. After checking the status of the wallet by interacting with this wallet endpoint and the user ID as the parameter which we pass through to get this response, all we need to do in the next step is put in the wallet ID to fund the wallet. And this is the wallet ID. I'm simply going to copy that and put it right here and then hit the execute button. And you see that we've successfully sent you 10 USDC to that wallet. So when you're going through this process, you get 10 USDC in your wallet. And that's what you're going to use to complete this step when you're going to initiate a transaction. In this step, we're going to send a certain amount of USDC from the wallet that we created to the same wallet. And this is just for demonstration purposes. If you've got another wallet address, feel free to send it to that other address. But before we do that, I want to explain this concept of sponsoring gas fees. If you are not already familiar, gas fees are charges in the blockchain networks that ensure transactions are processed efficiently and have to be paid with the native asset on that particular blockchain. For example, if you are working with the Ethereum blockchain, gas fees will be paid in ETH. This requires the end user to hold native asset to hold ETH in the example and then they will use that to pay for gas fees. But when a user controlled wallet is configured as a smart contract wallet, the end user no longer required to hold native asset to pay for gas fees. You as a developer, you can sponsor them, which makes the process of initiating a transaction super seamless and easy to go. And all this is made possible by the gas station. Feel free to visit our developer documentation to get more information about gas station, but in this, tutorial, we're going to go over the steps of using the gas station to sponsor gas fees because we already created the wallet to be a smart contract wallet. All you need to do is get your token ID that will tell you the type of token that we're working with. And you can see the API key has been pre-populated. The wallet ID is there already. All I need to do is hit the execute button and you can see the token ID for the native token, which is the Matic token, we have zero amount there. So we don't need to use that to pay gas fees. And I will explain, and you see how we're going to initiate the transaction shortly. And this is the token ID for USDC. And you see that we've got 10 USDC in this uh, account. So all we need to do is copy this and store it somewhere safe, or you can just make use of this other uh, model to copy it. So we're going to work with the second token ID, which is the one for USDC. And I'm going to copy this and I'll put that right here. We need the token ID right here and we need to put in the amount. So I want to send two USDC from the other wallet to the same wallet again, just for demonstration purposes, right? So I'll put in two right here and then I'll grab the destination address. I've copied the destination address because remember, when we created wallet, we got the address already and I asked you to keep it somewhere safe. So this is the destination address. This is the USDC token ID and this is the wallet ID. This is the amount you want to send. This is your user ID and then this is the API key. So all you need to do is hit the execute button and that would initiate the transaction. And you can see the challenge ID, the user token, the encryption key. And before you complete this whole step, all you need to do is confirm this transaction by completing the challenge. So we're using the web SDK for this and feel free to check it out to understand more of how everything works. But all you need to do right here is that every information we got above has been pre-populated for you and then you hit the execute button. And this is similar to the web2 experience that the user is already familiar with where they provide pin to complete a particular transaction. And I'm going to provide the pin that we created in the previous step. And if the user has forgotten the pin, they can easily use the recovery question that we set up also in the previous step to retrieve their pin in case it's forgotten. So I'll put in the pin right here and I'll use that to complete the challenge. And you can see that the challenge was successful and the transaction will take place as normal. All you need to do is navigate to the next step. And in this step, we're going to validate whether this transaction actually took place or not. There are two steps to validate this transaction. You could either use the blockchain explorer or use the web three console. I'm going to use the web three console in this step and you can feel free to read through these steps to see how you can validate using a blockchain explorer. So 
I'll go to my programmable wallet section under user control. I'll click on transactions and you can see that I sent to USDC outside and then which is a transfer outbound and you can see that I got back to USDC into the same wallet address. So you can check it out to get more information. This is the transaction hash, uh, transaction fee. This is the amount of USDC and you can see you can read through to get more information about just additional information about this particular transaction. And also you notice that when we created the wallet and 10 USDC was automatically added to our account. This is the transaction details right here. And this is how you can use the Web3 console to validate whether this transaction took place or not. And you can see that we've completed everything. You understood how to generate your API key, get the app ID, create a user and initialize the user account with associated wallet and all other information. And you understood how to check the wallet status and then you initiated the transaction and I explained the concept of gas fees. So this is everything that you need to know or you need to learn to get started using user controlled programmable wallet. If you need more information, feel free to check our developer documentation and also join our Discord channel where we'll be happy to provide you with guides and answer your questions and help you along your building journey. My name is Blessing and thank you for watching.